Near the end of the last great ice age, the winds howled across the rocky slopes of the Tagliente rock shelter in the foothills of the Italian Alps, the ancient peaks towering against the sky like sentinels over the landscape. Among them was a hunter of the tribe, whose presence was marked not only by his strong build, but also by his striking, almost otherworldly appearance. The cold morning air bit into his tan skin as he crouched at the entrance of the rock shelter, his sharp blue eyes scanning the horizon. The early dawn light crept over the valley below, painting the world in hues of silver and gold. The land was quiet, the chill of winter still lingering, though the herds of reindeer would soon stir, making their way through the frost-covered plains. The man's eyes, strange and brilliant, often drew attention from the others in his tribe. Their rich, deep blue colour was unlike anything his people had ever seen. Most of their eyes were dark, like the earth and the night sky, but his shone like the clear sky after a storm, a colour some said was gifted by the spirits. His skin, too, was paler than many of his kin, a subtle reflection of the cold, sun-starved lands they now called home. The elders whispered that his lighter skin and blue eyes were the marks of change, of a world adapting and evolving, lighter skin to better absorb the sun's sparse warmth and those brilliant eyes, the colour of the sky after a storm. The first Europeans, colloquially known as the Cro-Magnon people, represent a pivotal moment in the history of human evolution. These Homo sapiens arrived in Europe around 45,000 years ago, replacing or mixing with the last remnants of Neanderthal bands and leaving behind a rich cultural and genetic legacy. The story of the first Europeans is a fascinating journey through deep time, beginning with the arrival of Cro-Magnon man, a term traditionally used to describe the early Homo sapiens who lived in Europe around 20,000 to 40,000 years ago. These early modern humans are one of the direct ancestors of today's Europeans and represent a significant chapter in human evolution. Cro-Magnon refers specifically to remains found in the Cro-Magnon rock shelter in southwestern France, but today the term is still colloquially used to describe all early modern humans who lived in Europe during the Upper Paleolithic. The early Cro-Magnon people were strikingly similar to modern Europeans in appearance, though they exhibited some unique physical characteristics. They were tall, robust, and muscular, often standing up to six feet tall, with strong builds designed to endure the cold, rugged conditions of the Pleistocene. Their skulls were elongated with high foreheads and pronounced brow ridges, but they lacked the heavy facial features characteristic of Neanderthals. Their faces were generally broader and less forward-projecting, indicating more refined facial structures that are akin to those of modern humans. As they spread across the European continent, Cro-Magnon people left behind remarkable evidence of their existence, including their tools, art, and even genetic traces in modern populations. Genetic research has traced the origins of blue eyes, which are associated with some European populations today, to a mutation that likely first appeared around 20,000 years ago. The earliest evidence for this genetic mutation comes from remains found in Italy, where an individual who lived approximately 17,000 years ago had genes for blue eyes, though it's likely that the mutation appeared even earlier and gradually spread through the population. The appearance of blue eyes in the European population is a relatively recent development in evolutionary terms, with the genetic mutation that causes this trait likely emerging around 20,000 years ago. This mutation affects the OCA2 gene, which controls melanin production, the pigment responsible for the color of skin, eyes and hair. While brown eyes are dominant globally, the blue eye mutation spread rapidly through European populations, possibly due to sexual selection. The oldest confirmed individual with blue eyes is a Western hunter-gatherer from Spain, known as Labrana I, whose remains date back to only about 7,000 years ago. However, genetic evidence suggests that the mutation could have appeared much earlier, potentially among Cro-Magnon populations living around 20,000 years ago. The spread of this gene in Europe may have been facilitated by the migration of peoples during the post-glacial period as populations moved across the continent and mixed with one another. 
The 17,000-year-old Tagliente II is a notable upper Paleolithic fossil discovered in Italy, and genetic analysis has revealed that this individual carried the gene associated with blue eyes. This discovery is significant because it adds to our understanding of the spread of the blue eye gene mutation in early European populations. The fossil, named after the Tagliente rock shelter in northern Italy, where it was found, dates to around 14,000 years ago during the late Epigravetian period. The Tagliente II individual provides critical evidence for the presence of blue-eyed individuals in southern Europe during the Upper Paleolithic, supporting the idea that the blue-eye mutation may have been more widespread among early Europeans than previously thought. The gene responsible for blue eyes is a mutation in the OCA2 HERC2 region, which reduces melanin production in the iris, resulting in lighter eye color. The discovery of this trait in an ancient fossil from Italy helps trace the geographical spread and timing of the mutation across Europe, reinforcing the idea that early Europeans displayed a wide range of physical characteristics, including varying eye colors. By the time of Tagliente II, European populations had already been living on the continent for tens of thousands of years, experiencing environmental changes and population migrations. This individual is part of the same broader lineage of Homo sapiens as Cro-Magnon, but lived during a different phase of human evolution, after the last glacial maximum, when populations were recovering and expanding into various parts of Europe. The continuity between Cro-Magnon fossils and Tagliente II is evident in their shared ancestry, as both belong to the species Homo sapiens and reflect the ongoing adaptation to the European environment. However, Tagliente II, with its genetic evidence for blue eyes, also reflects the ongoing process of natural selection, where traits like lighter skin and eye colors became more advantageous in the northern latitudes with less intense sunlight. This is part of the broader story of how human populations evolved in response to both environmental factors and social dynamics over time. In terms of cultural context, Tagliente II also represents a period of sophisticated tool-making and hunting strategies that had continued to develop from the Cro-Magnon period. The Epigravetian culture, to which Tagliente II belonged, was known for finely crafted stone tools and advanced techniques in hunting, reflecting a deep connection to the environment. This cultural continuity, along with the genetic legacy shared between Cro-Magnon and later fossils like Tagliente II, highlights the evolutionary journey of early Europeans across millennia. Indeed, the presence of blue eyes in the Tagliente II individual reflects the growing genetic diversity of populations living in Europe during the period following the last glacial maximum. This mutation likely spread across Europe through the interactions and migrations of human groups, ultimately contributing to the genetic makeup of modern Europeans. Hunting was central to Cro-Magnon life, and they were exceptional hunters with a wide range of strategies that allowed them to thrive in various environments. They lived during a time of great climatic fluctuations, including the last ice age, which forced them to adapt to both cold tundra and more temperate environments. Their prey consisted of large Pleistocene animals such as mammoths, woolly rhinoceroses, reindeer, bison, and wild horses. These animals roamed the open plains and tundra of Ice Age Europe, providing vital resources for Cro-Magnon communities. The Cro-Magnon people developed sophisticated tools and weapons, including spears, spear throwers, atlatls, and later bows and arrows, allowing them to hunt more effectively at a distance. They also used traps and pitfalls, demonstrating their ability to plan and coordinate group efforts in hunting large game. The cooperation needed for successful hunting fostered complex social structures, with knowledge of animal behavior, tracking and survival skills passed down through generations. In addition to large game hunting, Cro-Magnons were opportunistic and varied hunters. They exploited smaller animals, fish and plant resources depending on the season and their specific environment. This diverse diet helped them survive in a wide range of habitats, from the icy steppes of northern Europe to the temperate forests of the Mediterranean. However, one of the most striking aspects of Cro-Magnon culture is their art, which includes some of the earliest and most famous examples of prehistoric creativity. 
Cro-Magnon people left behind an extensive array of cave paintings, carvings and sculptures that reveal deep, symbolic thinking and a sophisticated, aesthetic sense. The famous cave paintings of Lascaux in France and Altamira in Spain, which depict vivid images of animals such as horses, bison and aurochs, are masterpieces of prehistoric art. These paintings were not merely decorative, they likely served spiritual or ritualistic purposes, reflecting the deep connection between Cro-Magnon people and the animals they hunted. Some scholars believe these images were part of shamanistic practices, where the depiction of animals in caves might have been tied to hunting magic or fertility rituals aimed at ensuring the abundance of game. In addition to paintings, Cro-Magnon people also produced small sculptures and carvings, such as the famous Venus figurines. These small, stylized representations of female figures with exaggerated reproductive features are thought to symbolize fertility and the continuity of life, although their exact purpose remains debated. The creation of such intricate artworks suggests that Cro-Magnon people had complex spiritual beliefs and that their society placed significant value on symbolic representation. The religious or spiritual beliefs of the Cro-Magnon people can only be inferred from their art, burial practices, and symbolic artifacts. Their cave paintings, carvings, and personal adornments suggest that they viewed the world through a lens imbued with meaning and ritual. Burial sites provide some of the clearest evidence for their beliefs in an afterlife or spiritual realm. Many Cro-Magnon graves contain grave goods such as tools, weapons, shells, and even food, indicating that they believed in some form of existence after death. Some of the dead were also buried with red ochre, a pigment that may have been used in symbolic or ritualistic rites associated with life, death, and rebirth. The presence of elaborate grave goods and the careful arrangement of bodies suggest that the Cro-Magnons had complex spiritual practices, though the exact nature of their beliefs remain speculative. Like many early human cultures, the Cro-Magnon people likely adorned themselves with body art, jewellery, and other forms of personal decoration. Body art in the form of tattoos or painting with ochre has been suggested based on the presence of red ochre in burial sites and its use in cave paintings. These pigments may have been used not just for artistic purposes, but also for marking status, identity, or affiliation within the group. Adornments made from animal teeth, shells, bones, and stone beads have been found in Cro-Magnon sites, suggesting that personal decoration played an important role in their society. These objects were likely worn as necklaces, bracelets, or attached to clothing, indicating an awareness of personal identity, social status, or affiliation with specific groups. Feathers may have also been used in adornment, either attached to clothing or worn in hair or headgear, though direct evidence of this practice is harder to find due to the perishability of feathers. Genetic reconstructions of Cro-Magnons reveal that while many likely had olive skin tones to start with, some populations, particularly those in Northern Europe, began to develop lighter skin over time due to selective pressures related to vitamin synthesis in low sunlight environments. This gradual lightening of skin would become more pronounced in the millennia following the Cro-Magnon period as the blue eye mutation and changes in pigmentation spread across Europe. One of the key genetic revelations regarding the Cro-Magnon people came from the study of mitochondrial DNA, which is passed down through the maternal line. This DNA analysis indicates that the Cro-Magnons carried haplogroups that are still present in modern Europeans. These haplogroups were linked to populations adapted to cold, harsh environments and played a significant role in the survival of their descendants during the Ice Ages that plagued Europe during the Upper Paleolithic. The Cro-Magnon people represent an essential chapter in the story of human evolution and the development of early European culture. They were a resilient and adaptive group who survived the challenges of the Ice Age and left behind an extraordinary cultural and artistic legacy that continues to captivate researchers and historians. Their sophisticated hunting strategies, symbolic art, and possible spiritual beliefs reflect the complexity of their lives and the richness of their societies. Their genetic legacy, including the appearance of blue eyes and lighter skin, continues to shape modern European populations, linking us to our deep past. 
Through their art, tools, and the remnants of their bodies, Cro-Magnon people provide us with a window into the origins of human culture in Europe, reminding us of our shared ancestry and the enduring power of creativity and survival in the face of environmental change.